<clears throat> okay, if you have your Bibles, turn if you may to Proverbs chapter 31. Going to be speaking a Mother's Day message this afternoon. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Proverbs 31, 30. Babel is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fear the Lord, she shall be praised. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to get into your word. Speak to us through your word. Speak to those that will watch this on video, wherever they are, whenever they see it. Whatever state they may be, use this message to encourage the saints, to direct them and instruct them. Use this message to not only speak to those that are watching this on video, but also to bring salvation to any that don't know you. Be glorified in this portion of the service in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing, I, one book I do like is Proverbs. There is so much wisdom in this book, and I encourage you folks to take time to read it from time to time. Billy Graham had a habit of reading a chapter from Proverbs every day. Not often have I heard sermons from this book. However, this is a great verse to use for Mother's Day. This verse, why this verse is a description of what the writer of the Proverbs calls a virtuous wife, it is clear from verse 28, and verse 28 says this, her children rise up and call her blessed. So this is also a mother whose children cause her blessed. This verse, however, can be applied to all godly women, so all women, those of you in here, and those of you that will see this on video, whether you're a mother or not, this verse pertains to you. And you men can learn something from this verse as well. So do pay attention. First point we see is that beauty and charm can be descriptive. I mean, they're deceptive. Uh, the word favor means charm. It means Graciousness or grace of man. Now I consulted further in the dictionary, and the word means power or quality that attempts to please, attract, or fascinate. Now, favor or charm, have a word you want to use, can be used for good or it can be used for evil. A good example of evil would be Delilah. She was the girlfriend of Samson, and she deceived Samson in telling her the secret to his strength. Of course, you know the story. The Philistines came while he was sleeping, cut his hair off, and he lost his strength and was captured. One writer says, favor can give a false representation of a person, often being a cover for more the form so, some folks use it to cover hateful qualities. However, a woman that knows the Lord has qualities far better than charm or favor, or whatever word you want to use. And we see also in the scripture that beauty is fleeting. Physical beauty can be and often is fleeting. One may have great beauty while they're young, but it has faded away 
as they have gotten older. Can't tell you how many times I've seen obituaries of people that I've only gotten to know in recent years. And I see a picture of them when they were younger. And you would hardly think they were the same person. Their beauty had faded considerably before I got to know. Americans spend billions of dollars on cosmetics, procedures, and medications in an effort to enchance beauty or keep it. People are constantly looking for a fountain of youth. Remember, God explored Florida for the Spanish. His last name was De Leon. He thought he found the fountain of youth in Florida. Apparently, a lot of people still think there's a fountain of youth down in Florida because we got all these northerners and cold weather people to come down to Florida hoping to get revitalized, get away from the cold weather. Of course, the fact of the matter is, no matter what, all will die. Turn if you may to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. There's other scriptures that compare the human life to a grass and a flower. And we all know that grass and flowers will wither. Human beings will pass. But the person that knows the Lord Jesus Christ, their soul will live forever in the presence of Almighty God. Now, a good example of what I've just been talking about was the famous actress Rachel Welch. She was a uh, she covered a lot. She was on the cover of a lot of magazines back in the days when we were much younger. Well, set symbol if I can say that. And of course, her beauty faded as time went on. But the good news, and I found this out when she died, is that she came into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And really to, was a member of a Bible-believing church. And that's where she was at. I mean, that, that was her state before God when she passed away a few months ago. Though we may fade outwardly, God living, God's spirit within us strengthens us. And when we pass on, we go to a far better place than what we are now. Okay, going back to woman. The second one I'm going to bring out is talking about women who fear God. Now, a woman who fears God is one that's saved, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, saved through faith in God, in Christ. And such a woman fears God. When I'm talking about fear God, I don't mean hover in the corner with fear that God's going to beat you with a baseball. <clears throat> no, I'm talking about having a reverence for God and all for God. Treating him as the majesty that he is. That's what I'm talking about. The interesting thing about the book of Proverbs is that it starts with the fear of the Lord. In chapter 1, verse 7, the scripture says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We also see later on in the book, chapter 9, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it ends with wisdom. With, uh, it ends with the fear of the Lord because we see in this verse that I'm speaking of a woman that feared the Lord. And the wisdom that 
I'm talking about is a godly wisdom. Not the wisdom you get from textbooks, not the wisdom that you may get in a college class or a high school class, but a wisdom that comes from studying God's word and meditating on it continuously. There are traits of a woman that fears God. Turn if you may to 1 Peter chapter uh, 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Now a lot of this, a good number of things that I'm trying to bring out here are not politically correct. They're not truths that people want to hear. I would imagine that your typical unsaved person today, if they listen to this message and hear some of what I'm saying, they're criticize me as being a, a patriarch type guy or a, a woman hater or what have you. But that's far from the truth. If you, uh, chapter 3, 1 Peter. Chapter 3, 1 Peter, starting at verse 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Well, that's the first point I bring out, subjection to husbands. That if any obey not the word, they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And the word conversation there means manner of life. And then we've got the second point, and that's found in verse 2. Why they behold your chaste conversation cope with fear. Once again, conversation talks about manner of life. We're talking about a pure life that is godly, honest, full of integrity, with strict regard to the marriage state. Hebrews 13.3 says, marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. And of course, the godly woman has fear, the right kind of fear, fear of God and proper reverence to her husband. And of course, that's also mentioned in verse 2. And of course, in verse 3, we have this. Whose adorning let it not be with that outward adorning of plating the hair, of wearing of gold, and of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Mm -hmm virtuous woman does not major in outward appearance. Now, now I'm not saying that you don't try to keep up a good appearance. I might suggest that you look sloppy or unkept. That's not at all what the scriptures teach. However, in dealing with outward appearances, we see that there are many companies out there that are peddling their products that are supposed to help with their woman's appearance. We constantly see commercials dealing with cosmetics, fashions. We constantly see videos of fashion shows. We get catalogs from places like Petties and Coles and Target that have, all, have women in all kinds of various different clothes. But the woman that fears God is not going to major in that. She's going to major in godliness. She's going to major in being of a meek and quiet spirit that we see in verse 4. And we see, going back to Proverbs, that a godly woman shall be praised. A godly woman shall be praised. I praise God for the godly woman that are here today. I thank God for y'all. We have a church today because of you, you ladies, and you men too, but definitely you ladies. You ladies do your share of praying. You work hard for this church. Without you, we probably wouldn't have a church. We see that family and friends, as I said, praise the godly woman. They admire their traits. 
We see in verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Sad to say my wife's not here today, but if it's, she's a very godly woman. What you see her of her in this church, she's that way at home. She's not a different person at home than she is in church. She is a godly woman. And people that know her know that. I think of mothers that have gone on to be with the Lord. But had an impact on my life. I think of one woman, she lived in Fort Worth. She was a Baptist preacher's wife. She has two daughters that are surviving, both of them a godly woman. I've never met a woman like her. She was a woman that was severely handicapped, and yet she would not give in to her handicap. She determined to serve the Lord with what physical strength she had. She made a statement to me one time when I went to her for counseling. And she said, pray until the answer comes. With this specific matter that I talked to her about, I want to let you know that in two weeks, that prayer got answered. And it wasn't something I was expecting any, any time soon, soon at that time. Tell you, she was a very godly woman. Edie's mom was a godly woman. She passed away 13 years ago this month. Edie was a godly woman because of the influence of a godly mother. Some of you are the woman you are because you were influenced by a godly mother or a godly grandmother or a godly aunt. Godly mothers are needed in the church of Jesus Christ. They leave a legacy long after they departed. I remember a woman in the Tidewater area who went to church with one of her daughters. Well, I went to church with two with her two daughters. I went to church with one, and then later on I went to church with another. And this woman was a very godly woman. She would minister the gospel in the worst part of Newport News. She didn't care about skin color. She was concerned for souls. She ministered to African Americans in the worst section of Newport News. She died suddenly unexpectedly and her husband told me I never heard one person say a negative thing about her. That's a great testimony to leave behind. That's a great example of what I've been trying to tell you about. That's a great example of a Proverbs chapter 31. In closing, I encourage all Women to strive to be a godly woman. I encourage all men to strive to be a godly men. Of course, I'll be talking to you fathers, Lord willing, next month. But today's Mother's Day. Thank God for mother, godly mothers. And maybe I encourage any mothers that watch this on video, however old you may be, you may be a great grandmother, you may be a grandmother, or you may be a young mother with young children running around all over the place, or whatever your case may be, strive to be a godly mother as we see in Proverbs chapter 31, or Titus chapter 2. Read that chapter. Strive to be a woman after that. Don't listen to what the world tells you. Don't listen to the feminist. Don't listen to the political crack crowd, listen to what God says in his word that a woman's supposed to be. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, moved by your Holy Spirit, we put on our faults. May our lives reflect Christ. May our lives reflect the characteristics I've been talking about. Not just the woman, but the men too. Lord, I pray for the ones that are going to really see this on video. I pray that you really lead people to watch this, particularly young women. May they be drawn to you. May they be drawn to your word. May they be drawn to what this message is actually saying. May they be drawn to the troops. May they strive to be the Titus 2, 5 verse 31 woman that they need to be. And let it be all to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.